I am. It is March 2000, or I'm sorry, it's April 2016, and in about two months, there's going to be a new Ninja Turtles movie. As you can see, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, just real quickly, I, I really did like the first one, even though I understand its flaws. Um, my knowledge of the Turtles and uh, my appreciation for the Turtles really stems more from the comics and the graphic novels than it does the 1987 toys or cartoon series. So, and I understand that there's been so many different flavors of Ninja Turtles that uh, the movie was really just another version of that story. So the changes they made and kind of the stupid thing, I mean, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, just the title in itself screams stupidity. So I kind of, I really liked that first movie for what it was. It wasn't a masterpiece, but it was just kind of dumb entertainment. And it was good to see them on the big screen in some form. And that's really all I can really say about it. I can't, there's not a lot. I mean, I, I didn't love the film. Um, there's, there's not, I, I liked it probably more than the average person. But anyway, that aside, um, this is just a video sh for me, of me sharing my passion of the Ninja Turtles. And what I'm really going to do just real quickly, I'm not going to do any kind of full-fledged review. But I'm going to kind of go around and just kind of show what I own of the Ninja Turtles. And if, if you really want to get into the Turtles or understand why I've got such a passion for the Turtles, especially recently in the last couple of years, um, I'm going to show you pretty much everything I own that, uh, that really uh, spurred my love for the Ninja Turtles. And I think the best way to do this is to start chronologically. So let's start going over here and I'll show you what I mean. So this is just a part of my DVD collection. I've actually got more to the left of this. But as you can see right there, I do have some Ninja Turtles DVDs. These are the cartoon series from the 1980s. I've got the first three volumes. Um, I like a lot of these 80s cartoon TV shows. The, the main reason why I've got, how I've got them is for the nostalgia value. They're not really great to watch now. As a matter of fact, sometimes they can be kind of boring. But the point is, is this was my childhood. This is what got most kids and, and myself into the Ninja Turtles. So I thought I'd start with these, something very easy. Um, this one here is actually the very first season. It's the first five episodes of the Turtles. And back when the Turtles came out in the 80s, they started out with this five-part miniseries. So this first season is really cool because it actually tells a full story. Then when they started doing season two and season three, all the way up to, I think they went to season eight, the series became more episodic. Um, whereas every episode told a different storyline. But of course, um, this is what really inspired a lot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movies. Um, there's not a lot I can really say about these that hasn't been said before, except, uh, for, well, really with these two, they're pretty awesome. Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. Um, they're really fun movies. Uh, I'd probably say, like with the majority of Turtles fans, that the first one is actually the best live-action Turtles movie you're really going to get. Um, this one's great because it's it's really dark, it, it captures the feel. They really took a lot of inspiration from the original comic book um, than they did with the cartoon series, at least in terms of the tone and the storyline. Um, then the sequel came out and The Secret of the Ooze really follows more the tone of the, of the cartoon. And then everybody knows about the dreaded Ninja Turtles 3. Um, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with a lot of people. It's a pretty bad movie and a pretty poor attempt at a Turtles movie. But, you know, it is a part three. Uh, on occasion, I do throw it in. It really has not aged very well. Like, these two, especially the second one. Yeah, it's stupid, but it's humorous and it's funny. And there's a definite nostalgia value. Third one, I pretty much just pop in every now and then to remind myself that it exists. Um, I, I have the same issues with it that everybody else does. One of many is that the costumes look really terrible. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I love these three movies. Speaking of Ninja Turtles movies, I actually have the 90s Turtles trilogy on Blu-ray. Uh, it comes as, as a triple feature, as well as TMNT, the 2007 CGI movie. Um, as well as, I have that on DVD as well. TMNT, I enjoyed for what it was. I actually did see it in theaters. I liked the animation in that one. Didn't so much like the storyline. I didn't like... On that one, they didn't give you the shredder. Um, I don't even think they had much of a foot clan. It dealt with um, Captain Picard, basically, ruling these monsters that uh, went around creating havoc around New York City, kind of like the Gremlins. Um, but the Turtle storyline pretty much carries over right from Turtles 1 and 2 of the live-action series, which I really appreciated. 
Again, not a great movie, but as a Turtles fan, I like it because it's just another iteration of the Turtles. And it's not an origin story. They give you like a couple minutes of the origin story to get you caught up, but it's a totally different story. They don't try to redo anything that's been done before. So that's one of the things I really liked about it. Uh, there's a fight scene between Leonardo and Raphael in the movie that I really liked. And again, I love the animation of the Turtles. So this is the only DVD I own of the 2003 Turtles cartoon. I actually haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen any of those cartoons. Um, I've heard they're a lot darker. I know a lot of the video games that were based off of the Turtles in the early 2000s were based off of the series. Um, I hate the theme song of this show. I really do. Um, actually, the theme song for the original 80s cartoon changed, uh, I think, in the early 90s, and I hated that song, too. There's only one Ninja Turtle song, and we all know what that is. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Heroes in a half shell Turtle power the other reason I haven't watched it is because I, I've heard, and from what I've seen, they're borrowing more from the, the content of the graphic novel, which is great, but as you can see, it is clearly a kid's TV show, and the graphic novels are very gritty and are almost meant for teenagers, young adults. I mean, in the very first issue of the comic book, the turtles flat out murder the Shredder in cold revenge. So, I mean, and the, the turtles swear a little bit, and there's some, some blood and some violence in the graphic novels that you won't see in the cartoon. So I never really gravitated towards the 2003 show and I haven't seen the Nickelodeon one that's recently. I think that came out in 2012 or 13. Um, because again, as I said, my love for the turtles stemmed more from the graphic novels. Now, these are the colorized graphic novels of the first, I, I believe, 12 issues of the Ninja Turtles. Um, these are actually really common. Um, if you got into the comic books, uh, around the time of the show, or if you know of the comic books, chances are you probably started with these graphic novels. Very fun reads. They're some of the best books I have in my collection. Um, it's one of the reasons why I got into comic books on a very limited basis. Um, to this day, I'm still buying the, the new Ninja Turtles graphic novels that come out. Um, I don't buy the individual comics. I just buy the graphic novels because it's just much easier to enjoy the storyline when you're not out there every week trying to collect issue by issue what's going on. But these are really awesome. Full color illustrations. I'll show you if I can focus here. Um, just really cool. The artwork is very kind of primal, very sketchy, but uh, I don't know, I like it. And um, they did do an homage to this in the, the movie, I think it's Turtles Forever, where they crossed the 80s cartoon with the, the uh, 2003 cartoon. Um, this is where they got some of those images from. But uh, again, as you can see, it's got an introduction from Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Full color, very cool, four issues. Um, I've already done reviews of these books. Um, again, there's there's not a lot that hasn't been said. Um, they are very gritty and very dark, and a lot of them, especially the first two uh, graphic novels, inspired a lot of the events of the first two movies. Um, actually, there's a time-traveling story in book three, which is where they got... Um, some of the idea for Turtles 3 the movie from. Let me see if the cover has it here. Um, no. But the the girl in here, the, the girl in the cover, she actually uses a time, a time scepter to go back in time. And that's pretty much the only thing they used from the graphic novel in that movie. Uh, the story is way better, by the way. The, the comic book version. Um, but these are really cool. I would definitely check them out if you're a Turtles fan. These are awesome. These were done by First Publishing. Um, I don't know if they're still in print, but they are pretty common. I've seen them on eBay, and they're usually not that expensive. So if you can get your hands on them, this is personally what got me into the Turtles craze. But there's something better than that. These are the crowning achievement of my collection. And these are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate Collection Series. Uh, you probably can't tell by looking at this video, but these are pretty big additions fully hardcover. I mean, it's a very thick hardcover edition. And one of the coolest aspects of these, let me try to focus here. One of the coolest aspects of these is that they are reprinted in the original black and white. Um, they are annotated in between every issue. They have annotations from Kevin Eastman and, and Peter Laird. Um, they show you original artwork. Really cool stuff. Experiencing these in their original black and white is awesome. There's just nothing like it. Um, and which the best part about these 
this is probably the, from the uh, the City Fall issue. Let's see if I can find the first one here. This is the first volume here. Yeah, see, original black and white. So this is how they looked when they first came out in 1984. Very awesome collection. There are six, volume six just came out. Um, the reason why you'd want to get these, um, if you know, aside from just being really cool collector's items, uh, they, they're originally about $50 each. Uh, I got them on Amazon for about $30 a piece. And uh, what's really awesome is the, the, the four graphic novels that First Publishing did, for the most part, covers one story arc that pretty much, it ends, but it's kind of, it doesn't really have a conclusion. And if you ever wanted to know, if you ever read those four graphic novels and you wanted to know what happened afterwards, uh, the first four graphic novels, I believe, are collected in issues one and two. But after that, you pretty much get the adventures after what happens in book four of those graphic novels in black and white. So that's really cool. You find out how the Shredder returned and how they take care of the Shredder and kind of the issues that, that April and Casey and the Turtle family were kind of dealing with. Um, and you get more of that badass stuff that you saw in the original 1990s Turtles movie. Um, most of them, I mean, as you can see by the covers, they all have that really kind of gritty look to them. Um, I actually really like Volume 6. I just picked this up uh, last month, actually. Read it in about three days. Um, it's a collection of short stories that were never actually published in uh, full-length publications. These were short stories that are like two to three pages long that were either done for charity events or for special occasions, special events, things like that, and they're very rare. Um, so that was an awesome read. Because sometimes you just want a two to three page story of something really short and sweet that has a really cool message or it's just a really cool adventure that they go on. These are the jewel of my collection and I recommend them to anybody who's a serious Turtles fan. Now this is pretty much the extent of my nerdy, nerdiness. Th these are my collection of recent IDW Ninja Turtles graphic novels. Uh, there's probably about 15 books there. Each of them are about, I don't know, 17 to 20 dollars a piece. A um, little bit of money there. I know it's not like a very extensive collection, but these are all in some form Turtles comics. Most of them are Turtles, just Turtles comics. Uh, the ones in the back there, let me see if I can get in close here. I'll show you. These are Ninja Turtles classics. What these are, these are reprints of a lot of the comic books that you may or may not find in the classics, the, uh, the Ultimate Collections that I just showed you. Um, they're basically like what the first first edition, the first publishing graphic novels did, was they reprinted the black and white comics into color. And they look pretty good. You still get that kind of rigid, sketchy drawing. Um, these stories are really awesome. Now a lot of these stories are unrelated to the main story that's being told in the like the Ultimate Collections and the first graphic novels. They're, they go on side stories, like at some point they, they, uh, they go on a pirate ship at one point, they travel back in time, um, all kinds of crazy stuff. The, Baxter Stockman turns into an evil robot and starts to chase April O'Neil for reasons unknown. Um, very weird stuff. Then you've got uh, the recent IDW Ninja Turtle comic books are these right here. Uh, I think there's like 12 of them. This one's actually a side a side story called The Secret History of the Foot Clan. You know a lot of times when you read a comic book it'll refer to an issue that you might have missed. It'll say like see issue 50 million 101 point two whatever. Um, so they made these side stories that um, and the original 87 comics did that too. Um, like for example this is a villains one so they all have backstories of all the villains. This one's got Baxter Stockman and Krang and uh, I forgot, oh, uh, Old Hobbs, uh, he's a pretty cool bad guy. Um, and then you've got just your, you know, your regular everyday turtles. These are actually a continuing story. That's what's really cool. Like, from issue one to recently, they pretty much do follow one story. Although, ideally, it's a lot of fighting scenes with the turtles fighting mutants. Uh, they tried to redo the City Fall story. Um, really cool animation. It's a little more current. It's got a little more polish to it. Uh, the turtles kind of look, you know, a little different. Uh, there's one thing that, that I wanted to uh, point to, though. Here we go. So, this is um, kind of an odd, I think, an odd kind of look to the turtles. Um, I know that's how some people might prefer it, but it's, it's kind of weird, I think. And my point is that that's kind of, this is why I kind of enjoy the Ninja Turtles live-action movie that came out 
last year and why it didn't bother me, I guess, as much as so many other fans did. Uh, if you really read these comic books, they're all over the place in terms of storyline and in terms of artwork. And I'm not saying the artwork is bad. I'm just saying that there are so many different versions of the Turtles that it didn't bother me that the movie had them look the way they did. Look, at, I mean, look at, look at Donatello, for God's sakes. So this is kind of my... This is how I know the Turtles best. So the fact that... Uh, and this is also the how they changed the story in the live-action movie where, um, where you find out that April O'Neil... Uh, knew the turtles when she was younger, and they all ended up in a research facility, and all that kind of stuff. That kind of originated. That was taken from the IDW comics. Um, if they keep following um, that storyline, then hopefully in um, the second film coming out in in June, I think it's called Out from the Shadows. Um, they, you know, it, you're in for some surprises. Um, even if they don't follow that story and they just keep it very kid friendly, I mean that's cool too. But those are my graphic novels. Very cool. All kinds of different things. There's one other comic book series that I don't have the graphic novel yet because it's still an ongoing comic series, but I'm collecting them separately. And the reason why is because this is a very special crossover. Check this out. Over there in the corner there. Batman versus the Ninja Turtles. Oh my god. He got moment here. This is pretty sweet. This is actually... Hang on here. This is exactly what it seems. This is DC and IDW coming together to get uh, the Batman characters fighting the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles characters. So you've got the Joker, you've got the Riddler, you've got the Shredder, and you've got Batman and the Ninja Turtles. Um, it's a very pointless series. It's very entertaining as all hell though, and I love the animation because they, they don't treat either world separately. They don't give more detail to, like, the Turtles, for example, and kind of leave the Batman characters looking crappy. Uh, they, it, it looks really good. Let me see if I can give you, just show you a piece of artwork here. Uh, screw that movie. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Alfred's in there, and I, I just love the detail on, like, Michelangelo and, and uh, Batman. It looks pretty good. And it's got that kind of moody atmosphere, and not not so much the 80s cartoon and all that stuff, but uh, the comic books, they have that same kind of grittiness that Batman does, especially like the Frank Miller Batman stuff. So uh, it, it kind of works. Um, there's, a, there's actually a crossover of Ninja Turtles and the Ghostbusters. Um, there is a separate miniseries, Turtles in Time, which I'm sure was inspired by the video game Turtles in Time. And speaking of video games, that's one facet of the Turtles we haven't seen yet. So this is pretty much the extent of the video games that I own of Turtles, and this is why I have so few of them. Neither one of these games are very great. As a matter of fact, the only reason why I bought this one was because they promised somewhere in there there's a version of Turtles 2, the arcade game, I believe, an arcade port. I don't think I've played it because I actually own it on uh, Xbox Live. I also have Turtles in Time. There's a, a redo, reshelled or something like that. It's a remix of Turtles 4 with 3D graphics on PS3. Um, I have that as well. Um, I definitely like the Super Nintendo version better, but it's a decent game, actually. Uh, the TMNT game sucks. It's boring. Didn't like it. Didn't make it past the first level. Um, <laughs> the movie was a lot better. Um, but yeah, there's video games, uh, and that's pretty much, I think, everything I own. There's one more thing I'll point out here. So uh, this little space, this is actually the top of a TV stand, and this is my action figure slash dragon statue collection, and uh, as you can see, that's pretty much everything I have. I've got some Star Wars figures that are hidden away somewhere, I just didn't have room for them, um, and that's why I used to have Turtles toys as a kid. I didn't have any of the big ones like the Turtle Blimp or anything like that. I had some lunch boxes, and I had a, most of the figurines. Um, which I since lost a long time ago. But uh, the bottom line is, I kind of stop with the media, the video games, the movies, and the graphic novels. So I just wanted to kind of show you, like, I am a fan in my own way. I am kind of a geek, especially when it comes to the comic books. That's actually kind of why I got back into comic books recently, was because of IDW's um, bringing back the Turtles, Nickelodeon bringing back the Turtles, which I have yet to see, and of course the live-action movie.
So yeah, that's 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 it. That's uh, pretty much everything I have. One quick thing that I'll go into before we end this video here, because it's probably gone on longer than I wanted to. But I wanted to do this video for so long, and I finally got a chance to do it. Um, my thoughts on the trailers for the new Turtles movie. Um, I don't think, if you didn't like the first movie, I don't think you're going to like this one. Because a lot of the things that they did in that first movie, they kind of, it looks like they're doing in this one. If you didn't like uh, how the Turtles looked in the first one, uh, they didn't change the designs at all, so okay. A lot of people like the fact that Bebop and Rocksteady are in it. That's cool. But, uh, you know, back when Turtles 2 came out and we had Toka and Razor, we were pissed off because we wanted live-action versions of Bebop and Rocksteady. And I understand that this is the closest we're going to get, but the CGI is so obvious in these movies that I still don't feel like I'm getting the live-action Bebop and Rocksteady. I want people in costumes. Um, and the CGI just doesn't look right. I always feel watching, even with the first movie, that I kind of felt that they, the Turtles were cartoons and they were kind of separate from... The rest of their environments and I don't care how real they were trying to make them they still kind of look like CGI cartoons um, maybe more realistic than what you saw on TMNT but uh, but because you've got Bebop and Rocksteady and Baxter Stockman and it looks like they're actually having the Shredder in this and not just putting him in as an afterthought which they actually did with the first movie uh, Shredder I don't think was supposed to have a very big role in that movie at all um, they have Krang looks like Dimension X in there. So I'm glad that they're putting, they're, they're utilizing the Turtles franchise more. That doesn't mean it's going to be any good, because usually when they put a ton of characters into a movie, that's where the movie starts to suffer. So if you didn't like the first one, eh, I don't really think that this is going to redeem you at all. But I do think it'll be a lot of fun like the first movie. Um, the trailers actually, to me, look promising. It looks like, again, they're utilizing a lot of the, uh, the Turtles universe, they've got the Turtles van in there, and the Turtles van actually does something. It's not some piece of junk real van that uh, they used in, like, the 90s Turtles movie. Um, so, yeah, that, that's pretty cool, and I am looking forward to it. And um, there you go. There's my thoughts on everything I own of Ninja Turtles, and I will catch you later.